according, Ms. Yentl, according to your organization's analysis, there are about 92,000 plus affordable and available rental homes in the Chicago area, but about 326,000 extremely low income renter household. That's right, one of three households in Chicago, less than one in three, have access to affordable housing. DePaul University's Institute for Housing Studies found that in Chicago's Logan Square community, for example, there was a 12% drop between, in, a, in the share of available affordable housing between 2012 and 2014 and between 2015 and 2017. This enormous lack of affordable housing is driving some troubling trends. For example, some of the outcomes that this reality has produced according to the Chicago Community Trust is that Chicago lost about 100,000 African American residents in the past 10 years. Logan Square alone has lost over 20,000 Latino residents and nearly 10,000 African American residents in the past 15 years alone. How can increased investment in the National Housing Trust Fund help low-income communities stay in their homes? Well, the National Housing Trust Fund program was designed exactly to meet the need that you're describing very well. And the need that you're describing exists in your district. It exists in every congressional district, whether they're rural, suburban, or urban. The primary cause of the affordable housing crisis we have today is the shortage of homes affordable and available to lowest income people. So the National Housing Trust Fund program at its current funding level, all of the funding, all of the dollars go to states in order for them to get the funds out to developers to build and preserve apartments for the lowest income people. So in your state, there's a project that's been funded through the first year's allocation of the Housing Trust Fund that's serving homeless veterans in other communities across the country. Uh, housing Trust Fund homes are housing people experiencing homelessness, previously experiencing homelessness, uh, survivors of domestic violence, people who were previously chronically homeless, and others of some of the most vulnerable people in our country. Thank you. Um, Transit-oriented development. Uh, Chicago City Council five years ago passed an ordinance encouraging transit-oriented development. I believe in improving transportation and mobility for neighborhoods. That's a major reason why just last week I was in Logan Square to support a proposed 100 unit affordable housing development next to a transit station, the Chicago Transit Authority. However, we know that development, when done incorrectly in Chicago, can lead to gentrification, displacement, and racially inequitable outcomes. Since Chicago's council passed its transit-oriented development, several developments have gone up, but only one is currently available. How do we prioritize and provide resources for equitable transit-oriented development projects that will maintain diverse communities in the full sense of the word, like Logan Square? All right, it's a great question, thank you. And so transit-oriented development is a really important um, part of the solution, ensuring that we have density in homes that have access to transportation, good jobs. And with that often comes increased investments in that community and gentrification. And what we have to ensure is that there's not displacement as a result of that gentrification. Affordable housing is the key to that. Affordable homes that are built and preserved in communities that are gentrifying become the anchor that allows for long-time residents, low-income residents, people of color, to remain and continue to afford their homes as costs go up around That's them. So it's essential to ensure in any kind of transit-oriented development um, uh, project that there are affordable homes, affordable to the lowest-income people, to allow those residents to remain. 